Um, so this mixed demo two is attached to today's notes. So if you want to um, kind of practice this uh, as well, you can do that. Okay, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and open this up on my laptop here, so you can kind of see what it is I'm doing. Okay. Bless you. Yeah. Uh, some I don't need it. So if you get these detailed reports, basically, you don't have to. I basically Pro Tools is just kind of warning you that something changed with your hardware setup. Okay. You don't necessarily need a detailed report, so you can just hit no on those. Okay. Um, so. First things first, uh, if, you, if you watch the video, what's one thing I need to fix over here? Anybody see it right from the get-go? Naming, yeah, naming my tracks, OK? Uh, I can simply double click. It brings open a window. I can give it a name. So this is my uh, voice, uh, or I could just say, or I could say narration, something like that. You do also have. Quite a bit of room for comments, um, and I've seen different engineers do different things with this. Some people will actually make notes about what microphone was used uh, and the different setup that was used for actually making the recording. But know that you can keep some extra notes here as well. Okay. Uh, once you open up one, Pro Tools gives you this next and previous, so I can actually hit next and go to the next track and give that a name. Uh, this is my. Let me see. Is this my Windy Park? Yes, this is my Windy Park recording. And then my next one is telephone. Okay, uh, hit OK. Zoom out. Yeah. So now you see how I've got some good, solid, descriptive names here. Okay. Um, okay. So the one thing that he did in the recording in the the video was actually use the master track to monitor the levels overall, and we didn't really talk about that. Um, the, the thing that I would recommend you do is if you go to the mix window and find your master track, you can, in the multi-channel plugin, let's see, there's insert, dynamics, and this maxim track, which actually gives you what's called a limiter. I don't, I'm going to kind of gloss over what a limiter does, basically. But this, this plugin I found has the best level meter for kind of watching your levels between input and, and output uh, if you do any processing here. So if I play this now, see how I'm getting uh, levels. I, I can see I'm peaking at around negative 12 here, uh, negative 12 dB, OK? We haven't really talked about that, but in uh, digital audio situations, it's, it's measured as 0 dB being the top, and everything that's below is a certain negative dB value below the maximum. Okay, Awesome. Overload buffer. I love it when that happens. Okay, uh, It's probably because I have the screen flow set up going at the same time that I have uh, Pro Tools playing. It's probably, it probably doesn't like that, but OK. okay. But this, this can provide you with a, a little level meter that you can watch a little bit bigger than the one on the uh, overall mix, or you can just simply watch the one on the mix window here and see what level you're hitting. Okay, so as a way to kind of hit to see what your overall mix level is is uh, coming out as. Okay, um, then let's see. So I mentioned, and we're not hearing output. Let's see. Can I get the output here? One and two. Okay, this is up all the way and I'm barely hearing it. Why is that? Okay. Not sure why it's so soft. So apologies for So today I want to do a quick demo just to um some Okay, so if I solo this first track, what you're gonna find is when I start to So today I want to do a quick demo just fast forward here. I get to this point in the project. First let's look at a Okay, so I was talking here at the beginning, and then I go quiet while this other sound plays. I was just basically listening to this in my office and just counting the time until I wanted to kind of record demo again. But what happens is I've now got an open mic here with background noise just kind of collecting the ambience in my office at this point, okay? This is gonna add to the overall noise level in my project, okay? And so the best thing you can do is actually cut out that silent recording, if you will, okay, and actually put 
true silence on the, the track. So the easiest way to do that is with the selector tool. Okay, you can switch to the selector tool and you can click and drag. And I can delete, okay. So again, I'll undo. So this is with the recording, just the silent microphone running in my office. If I just use the selector tool to delete it, now I've actually got true silence. There's nothing on the track here, basically. And so no sound is actually bleeding into my, my secondary sound that's filling in that gap, OK? Uh, I could, uh, although I did not have the ability to open up your sessions, I could tell that some of you had open mics running with dead si with uh, dead air, basically. Maybe, maybe that's a good way to distinguish it, basically. Dead, you understand the, the concept of dead air, basically? The mic's just running, kind of uh, capturing the ambience of the room, basically, OK? When you edit out that dead air, you'll get true silence and you'll lower the overall noisiness of your project, okay? So make sure you do that, okay? You may also need to um, add some automation when you do that. So again, automation is this little um, triangle right here. Lower that and you can actually add in some uh, volume automation. I'm gonna see, zoom out, zoom this way, okay? Uh, go back to my grabber tool, and I can click, 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 and lower this so that it fades out. When do you record it? Okay. I really wish this was louder because try that. When do you record it? When do you record it? Okay, so there's just a fade out there now. Uh, first, let's look at a when do you recording. Okay, uh, and adding in that automation kind of fade out on as your clip ends will help um, reduce any pops or clicks or, or what I was calling messy edits. So if you got a note about messy edits, it's probably because you're editing before the sound stop and not creating kind of a fade out. You, you might need to extend it and create a fade out so that you get a smoother end to each of your regions, okay? Uh, so now let's uh, move from my narration to actually this Windy Park recording here. So we'll start listening here. Oh. I go over to the mix window, I can actually raise this. You hear that rumble, especially right there. Right? That's like wind in the microphone as I'm walking around with it, okay? Yes? Okay. And some of you had this problem all the way back to uh, project one, and I just kind of threw the EQ on and fixed it for you. Yes? I think it was like, Kira, I think you had this like wit like boomy windiness in one of your recordings, if I remember correctly. You know what I'm talking about? Or no? Am I misremembering your project one? Okay, <laughs> um, so what I want you to do for this project, I want you to cut, start to get, uh, all of you to kind of get competent about this and be able to uh, remove this windy recording yourself, okay? The inserts on your mix window allow you to add in processing, add in some sort of effect on your sound file, okay? Uh, and the, the, the processing that you uh, are, should be interested in nine times out of ten is some sort of EQ, okay? Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create an, uh, a one band EQ for this because I want to do something very simple. Okay. And let me zoom in on this re real quick. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you will notice on this scale, this graph over here, a few numbers. Okay. And it says 20 and it ends at about 10K. Okay. So a scale from 20 to 10K, what does that sound like? What unit of measurement related to sound would, would be on that scale of 20 to 10K, or dare I say 20 to 20K? Hertz. Hertz, yes, okay. So this is frequency on the x-axis, and then this is gain on the y-axis, okay. When you've got a solid line at zero, what it's, what it's showing you is not that there's no sound at any, uh, at any frequency. What it's showing you is that there's uh, no change at specific frequencies, okay? So the straight line here 
is represents no change in the overall frequency balance. Okay, if you're uh, if this is not ringing the bell, you might want to go back and look at. I think it's chapter three where he talks about the spectrogram view and looking at graphing sound uh, frequency versus gain. Okay, uh, that's what you're looking at here when you're looking at an EQ graph. Okay, is this frequency on the x-axis and gain on the y-axis, okay? Um, I can, for, for wind recording, the type that you want is a high-pass filter, okay? And you notice how this, this gray line goes from being straight to having this curvature down, okay? What it's showing you is that above a certain level, it's going to be no change, that straight line at zero, but then as it's curving down, it's lowering these frequencies so that they are not getting through your recording, okay? It's dampening those frequencies. It's lowering them. Okay, uh, and so a high pass filter at 1,000 hertz, basically, what it's showing you is that everything below 1,000 hertz is going to get dampened. Everything above 1,000 hertz is going to get is going to be stay the same. Okay, uh, and if I play the recording now, oh, this jumped all the way back to the beginning. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, I'm going to make a selection here so that I can loop it. Yeah, I, I definitely don't hear any uh, wind at this point. I don't hear much of anything at this point, though. That's the problem. Okay, so 1,000 hertz is probably too high, uh, but the video talked about starting at the bottom, right, and kind of raising it. So there's that rumble again. Okay, and it can be handy when you're doing this to actually engage the loop function. So where is it? Under options, there's this loop playback option. So when you've got a selection like this and you want to test the EQ on a specific section, uh, it's helpful to have it looping. So let me zoom in here. And I'm going to... And also raise this. Let's see if you let me. Yeah. Are you hear how the rumble's gone now? So if I bypass, again, bypass, when you start to work on these effects, bypass is your friend because bypass overrides the processing and lets you hear the original. So there's the low rumble. and I click it on, and it goes away, okay? Because what I've done here is I've said, okay, I want no change up until about 100 hertz, and then I want you to dampen those frequencies, those low rumbles, I want them dampened. I want them less, okay? That's what this one band EQ can let you do. The key point here is setting it on high pass, lowering the frequency all the way down, and then gradually bringing it up. Uh, and you can play around with this cue and actually increasing it so you get a greater slope on this line, basically. That's what the cue does, okay? Are we clear on that? Okay. So if you've got a, a, a recording with a uh, low rumble, that's one way, to, that's, that's a way that you can fix it, okay? Um, and how am I doing on time? Whoa, okay. Uh, let's see, zoom back out. Okay. So... Uh, once again, I have some dead air, so let me click here and play. Ah, I need to unsolo. I'm not hearing it. Why did it stop? Ah, my automation is on it. Good eye. So let's see here. Boop. Raise it back up. Okay, so I've got this transition into me talking about the phone. Probably need to raise it even more. Um, I'll do that before you on the phone line. Okay, so if I zoom in again. <laughs> Bless you, yeah. Uh, I'm going to select again and edit out this dead air. Okay, I'm in overtime now. I realize that. 
Okay, yes, thank you. Um, zoom back out. Okay, I can drop in. I fade out here. Okay, and I'm going to drag back my phone audio. Uh, so this was the other thing that they talked about was actually recording off of the phone and the fact that you needed to kind of shave off the, the upper and lower frequencies, okay, using a multiband EQ. Um, so this is a recording of a text. Press 1. To save it, press 2. Anybody remember to voicemails? Press 3. To forward it, press 5. To mark it new, press 6. Um, and if you're wondering how to record phone messages, there actually are a number of apps for recording phone conversations that you can actually have running in the background. Uh, just be aware, I, I, I think I've mentioned uh, Florida being a two-party consent state. Uh, that basically means that if you are going to be recording a phone call, make sure that um, the person on the other end of the line knows that you're recording. Otherwise, you're committing a misdemeanor in the state of Florida. Just letting you know that, okay? Uh, so make sure you your party is aware that you're actually making that recording, okay? So then if we go to insert this time instead of a one band EQ, I'm going to insert the seven band EQ, which uh, as you would expect has more options. Uh, but in order to replicate what he was doing in the video, uh, you really just need the high pass filter and the low pass filter here, these first two on the plugin, okay? Uh, if you take, let's see, if you take these and right, no, let's see, where's my, ah, I have to turn it on. Okay, so if you venture into seven band EQ land and you're just trying to cut off the high and the low, okay, uh, let's do this, zoom out so you can see the whole thing, okay. So when I first turned it on, these, act these bands were actually off. So the first thing I'd say to do is turn on these bands and turn off the other ones just to simplify your life. Okay, now we can turn up the slope on these. And anybody remember the frequencies that he talked about for telephone voices? If not, I have it written down, it's okay. Okay, it's uh, 200 hertz. Yes, and 3,500. Uh, 3,500. Okay. So now if I play my, what now? 3.5 kilohertz is, well, yeah, 3.5 kilohertz is the same thing as 3,500 hertz. Okay. So if I just do this and play my phone message now. Press 1. To save it, press 2. To delete it, press 3. So to forward bypass. It, press 5. To mark it new, press 6. To skip back, a message. Strip customer, 3, 5, 2, four, It's subtle, but do you hear that extra four, two, coming seven, through? And you, maybe you can't hear it eight, where you guys are, basically. But. Tip the landline message. Can you send me the code for the green screen room, please? Okay. We want to use it for our cunt music video. Okay. Thank you for using text to landline. So uh, that's just that's how you would use a multi-band EQ in order to shave off the high and the low frequencies in a recording that has excess noise at the top end and the low end, basically. Okay, uh, and that's really the three or four things I wanted to show you guys real quick. Okay, uh, feel free to rewatch this video after I post it online, and you've got a demo session that you can download and practice these things, basically. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, basic EQ techniques that if you've got problems with uh, things in the EQ, you can kind of play around with this and actually use these, uh, this one-band EQ and this seven-band EQ to fix some of those problems in your mix, okay? Um, any questions?